I'm going to talk about the principles of good programming, which are derived from the clean code principles and which yeah, are summed up or distributed over many programming books. And these are some, some of the most important ones. Um, afterwards, we will make a short break. So what are the principles of good programming? Firstly, decomposition. If you have a big problem, how can we make this problem manageable? And yeah, it can be made manageable by decomposing it into sub-problems. So divide and conquer is um, an idea which also is related to this decomposition. Then abstraction. So if you have a problem, we can wrap around and abstract away the details. And by looking at this new abstracted way, maybe the problem isn't that hard anymore. Then decoupling to reduce dependencies, because um, sometimes we have to change things. And if we have very strong dependencies of objects to each other, then it's difficult to change, because if you touch one object, all related objects or dependent objects has, have also to be changed. And we want to avoid this. Also, decoupling could mean um, Sometimes during programming, we don't know how things will work out and we don't know which, for example, sorting algorithm we are going to use. Maybe we should shift this decision to later. Or, for example, we don't know how the, the graphical user interface might look like. And maybe we we'll leave this to the, to the user itself. For example, in Big Blue Button, you can change the layout. You can um, make the, the video screen smaller or bigger, the chat window smaller or bigger, as you want it to be. And the last thing, usability and simplicity. So we should make things easy to use right and hard, hard to use wrong, which is also a very famous quote. Um, we should adhere to expectations and make usage intuitive for the client. So this I want to mention because sometimes when you really know how to program stuff in C++, for example, and you have to write, for whatever reason, a program in Python, uh, you can't simply uh, take your coding standard and take all the the... the best practices of C++ and apply it to Python, you should stick to the Python principles and vice versa. So you should adhere to the expectations of the environment which you are actually working in. You should speak the language of the customer, so to say. So let's talk about these four properties in detail and afterwards we have a break. So with decomposition, we want to split up a problem. Divide and conquer. So we have a big problem. We divide it into some smaller prog problems. Then we find the solutions for these smaller problems. And hopefully we can find a solution for every of these. And then we combine this solution again together. So map reduce is also similar um, in, in thinking. Then we have a separation of concerns. So um, by decomposing down a problem, we can separate easy stuff and difficult stuff, or we can separate uh, the different concerns from each other. For example, serialization from actual network communication or some um, interaction with the user from the actual business logic and so on. And this orthogonality principle is also important. It's quite the same to separation of concerns, but it's more about um, things which don't uh, rela uh, relate to each other shouldn't be in the same class. So they should be split up and should be exchangeable independently of each other. Of course, single responsibility falls under this decomposition principle. There is also Curly's law to remember decomposition. Do one thing and do it well and stick to that. So this is from the movie City Slickers. I don't know if any one of you <laughs> still knows this movie. Georg, maybe. But okay, let's continue. 
Abstraction. So, we want to hide away the implementation details. Um, of course, we can always wrap an, around an, uh, another layer around the problem. Um, so these two things make it easier to, to solve the problem and to see the, how the problem works. Also, Liskov's substitution is a kind of abstraction. So we can substitute uh, subclasses into their parent classes or their parent interfaces. Actually, we only have to work then with the parent interfaces and we don't have to know the detailed subclasses at all. And there is this fundamental theorem of software engineering. We can solve any problem by introducing an extra level of indirection by David Wheeler. So this, this abstraction principle is important um, because it makes a single problem more graspable. So you can... Um, yeah, make it, maybe provide an easier interface to this problem or uh, yeah, hide away the implementation details. But as you see in this comic of uh, yeah, very cool software architecture, it can be that you, that you have so many layers of abstraction that it gets even more complicated. So this is something you should avoid. And also, uh, as you see in this example, oops, on the other side, in this example, um, sometimes layers don't even have right names anymore, so they, they just name it after the developer who a developer who introduced this layer. Next thing is decoupling. And by decoupling, we mean um, we should minimize coupling of, of objects to each other. We should maximize the cohesion. So things which belong together should be together and things which don't uh, re relate on it to each other should be separated. So the separation of concerns um, also falls under this category. We want to shift binding time to later. So I already explained that. Uh, sometimes we can we can decide at coding time or at development time, the de development time, what we should do. So we want this to sh to yeah be defined at runtime, for example. Dependency injection is actually something which falls under decoupling by yeah uh, shifting the the actual used class or shifting this decision which class is actually used to runtime and just configuring um, which class stands for which interface. Composition over, over inheritance, we also heard in the videos. Mm, what is meant by that? We will talk about this in detail when we talk about the adapter, because there is the class adapter and the object adapter, and they both use different approaches how to do it. But um, in school and also at university, we learn inheritance. And we should use inheritance in order to yeah, um, not have to, having to re-implement stuff. So we can reuse already existing functionality. And we don't have to rewrite or copy all the source code. Um, but composition, actually, but actually inheritance has its problems. So if you have more than five inheritance uh, hierarchies or, or layers, you yeah, don't understand anymore which class implements what. And uh, it makes it very difficult to understand. Composition takes a, a different approach and just says, okay, um, don't inherit from a class, just use it and provide uh, its functionality to the outside. So here you have to program more, but you are more flexible. Also, inversion of control is a decoupling principle. The, the Hollywood principle, don't call us, we call you, falls under this. Oh, sorry. So this, is, this would be a perfect principle for the observer pattern. So instead of, of polling a subject to, to have you changed your data or is, is there some new data, you use the observer design pattern and then you get informed whenever a data change is there. Also, the open-close principle falls under this category. So we want to encapsulate what changes 
and we still want to be open for yeah modific or we want to be open for extension and also embrace change again is an, an ongoing ongoing motto which we have here the law of demeta i don't know if you ever heard of it but this is also similar to the to the liskov substitution a very theoretical um, um, definition how to use dependencies and it says we should only use direct dependencies so only dependencies of objects which we got as a parameter which we have as a member in our class um, and what else i think there was this third category but i forgot but important here is we don't should use this um we should, don't should use sub methods of subclasses of of um, of objects which we have directly available. So we sh should only use direct dependencies. The last thing is uh, usability and simplicity. Yagni is a very important uh, word which you may have already heard. You ain't gonna need it. Um, sometimes when design patterns are used uh, or when, when you learn design patterns you, you think, oh, that's cool, I want to use this everywhere. This is the golden hammer for every pro problem. But actually that's not true. You should think about if you really need it, otherwise you're going to over-engineer your software. So sometimes you don't need additional functionality. Sometimes you don't need this extensibility and modifiability. So think about if you're really going to need it, because most of the time you ain't going to need it. Then try. Don't repeat yourself. Also a very important um, principle. So we shouldn't just uh, search for code on Stack Overflow and copy and paste it into our projects. We should somehow pack it into libraries and share these libraries as open source, for example, so that we don't have to repeat this code. Also, um, it would be okay to repeat, for example, two times, but if you write the same code for the third time, you should encapsulate it away in an own uh, object, for example, and reuse the method from this object. Then there's this principle of least astonishment by Scott Myers. So it's about um, how as an as a developer, or if I'm a developer and I'm using a developer and I'm using a library, um, what am I expecting to find? So it should be intuitive to use. So um, if you write a library for some someone else, or, for, or if you write and define an interface or a class for someone else, it should be yeah um, easily easy to understand the applier the user of this class shouldn't think and shouldn't have to read through uh, hundreds of pages of of uh, readme documents and help files uh, he should should be able to use it right away also it should be easy to use right and hard to use wrong this is also a famous saying by scott myers um, so if you define an interface of course you could put in every option and every possibility you can think of but um, then maybe a client is using a wrong version of your um, or is using your software in a way which was not intended so you should code for the maintainer you should uh, separate this command and query so queries are just uh, methods which return data but don't change it actually and commands change the state of objects so this there should always be a clear distinction of methods or functions which have side effects and pure functions so to say and of course interface segregation is and it falls under this um, part of of principle um, we should make interfaces as small as possible and we should specify it to our customer, to the needs of our customers. Occam's razor also comes here. Um, so it's a scientific principle and it tells us 
um, if there are two possible theories for which are explaining some some events, we should use the easier one. So we should do the simplest thing possible. Also, kiss is a yeah famous saying: keep it simple, stupid, or keep it short and simple. So these principles are behind all the design patterns. So whenever you you look at the design patterns, there are always these uh, principles of abstraction, decoupling, usability and simplicity, and decomposition. 